Today's video is brought to you by MPB. Lens reviews and opinions can be one of the most confusing parts of the photography world. Both praise and critique can often be overblown to the point where a lens's capabilities becomes hard to determine. And vintage lenses are often some of the hardest to judge. Some people love them, swearing that they're more filmic, less clinical, and then some people hate them, just saying that they can't resolve newer sensors, they're a waste of time, and so on. And that's why for me personally, whenever I can, I'm a huge fan of doing comparisons just so uh, I can use the old eye test to see the differences and then just come to my own conclusions of what works for me. And that's what we're gonna do today in this video, just using the uh, GFX 100S Smolder Pentax 645 glass, comparing it against some Fuji GF glass just to see if uh, these older lenses can keep up with this new sensor and then also if they give like a different or more filmic look to the images. So when I grabbed the 100S, uh, adapting vintage lenses was definitely one of the appeals to me uh, for a couple reasons. You know, with this older Pentax glass, obviously it's medium format, so it's gonna cover no problem. Uh, also just very affordable compared to the Fuji stuff. So it gives you a nice kind of cheap option to get some primes for this system. Uh, nice and compact as well. This is a 75 mil 2.8. So you can see it's nice and uh, small. Obviously there would be an adapter evolved with this. But then also, you know, like I said, could just be in our heads, but like many people, there was the appeal of using older glass like this and having something that like takes the edge off a little bit and maybe gives me a little bit more character. Okay, so the only Fuji lens that I own is the 35 to 70. I bought this when I picked up the 100S. This is like their newer kind of kit zoom lens. And I bought this just for hiking. Obviously it's nice and compact, but uh, optically it's been amazing. I've really seen no flaws with it for the style of work that I do. But wanted to use something else for this test. Um, if you watch this channel, you'll know that uh, MPB has come on board as a sponsor. They are uh, the world's largest online retailer of used camera gear. They also buy gear as well. Uh, that's actually where I picked up the 100S. Uh, but they offered to send me a lens uh, to just test out for a few weeks. So I ended up grabbing the 32 to 64 F4. This is Fuji's like premium standard zoom lens. And the reason that I grabbed this originally was to compare against the 3570. Didn't get around to doing that just because I had to move my schedule around a bit, but I figured this would be a good benchmark uh, for this test, just because obviously the 32 to 64 is a very good lens. And on the Pentax side, I have two lenses. So I have the 45 2.8 and the 75 2.8. These are both the original A versions. Optically, they're the same as the newer FA versions. And the 45, uh, it gets decent reviews. It's never been like one of the favorites for the Pentax system. Uh, whereas the 75 gets very good reviews. I have used this lens quite a bit uh, on my film camera. Been very happy with it. But uh, 45 is kind of like my go-to focal length on this system. So uh, this was the only option with the Pentax. And then also gonna just take a look at a few images. I have uh, Contax 50 mil 1.7 here that I've adapted to EF mount and then use that adapter to go to GF. So kind of a fun thing to mess around with as well. Anyway, so let's uh, hop on the computer and we will take a look at some of these images. Okay, here we go. So uh, jumping into it. So this is the Fuji. I've removed like automatic lens profile corrections. I just wanna look at these as they are. And this is the Pentax. So Fuji, Pentax. And you'll notice right away, and I noticed this when I was actually shooting these images on the back of the camera. So Fuji, Pentax. The Pentax is quite a bit warmer. Fuji, Pentax. Um, and again, I, I mean, this is something that you could just warm up the, the Fuji file of, if you like how that looks. But it's interesting to note, like that's, I'm not gonna spoil it, but that is one of, one of the things that uh, the, kind of carries across the board with the Pentax. So uh, we have the Fuji on the left, Pentax on the right. As you can see, it's quite a bit warmer, but in terms of like look, like there's no drastic difference between these two when it comes to like color and contrast and things like that. Uh, these are edited, they aren't like, I wouldn't consider these final edits. I didn't want to do too much to them. I just wanted to uh, kind of get them to a bit of a point, but uh, no heavy edits. So they both look good. They look very similar. Um, but if we jump into 100%, it's 
we'll go up here. If we look at like the sharpness, uh, this, the Pentax 45, you know, in kind of the center of the frame, it looks great. And obviously it has no issues uh, with this 102 megapixel sensor. It looks pretty close to the Fuji in terms of detail, in my opinion. We'll even go into 200% here. So you can see maybe the Fuji's just a little bit better, but like, you know, the, the Pentax certainly can keep up with this sensor. When people say like, these older lenses can't resolve these sensors, I picture something that's blurry. This looks fine, it's doing a great job. But where the Pentax starts to fall apart, and this is just unique to this uh, 40, like this specific uh, focal length in the Pentax system, it's something I read in reviews before I, I picked it up, is once we start getting to the edges of the frame. So Fuji on the left, you can see uh, it stays very sharp in the corners and the edges and the Pentax really starts to kind of fall apart. You get a lot of this like fringing as well on these high contrast areas, which I mean, that can be taken care of pretty easily, but uh, yeah, when you get to the corners, it starts to fall apart. Okay, so next scenario, this is kind of a crazy scene. There's a lot going on, but I figured it'd be good for this because it'll give us a lot to look at. So this is Fuji. And that's Pentax, Fuji, Pentax. So again, seeing that difference in warmth between the two. Um, and the Pentax, and this is something that I've noticed throughout as well, uh, starts to lose like a little bit of contrast when you get into these uh, situations that are um, like maybe backlit or have some extreme highlights and stuff. It's really hard to see in this, but I would say it's a little less contrasty than the Fuji, but these are minimal. In terms of like look, these are minimal differences. They both look pretty close. We'll go into 100% again. So you can see if we're looking at uh, the front of this like uh, tractor or bulldozer or whatever it is, uh, again, Pentax looks great. Not far off the Fuji. Fuji's on left, Pentax is on right. Even as we go up here into this cab area, uh, same thing. And then one more to look at here. So this is the same scenario, but this is obviously now we have the, the sun coming through. I want to show this one because this is something you'll notice with the Pentax lens as we go through these tests. So here's Pentax, Fuji, Pentax, Fuji. So again, same differences as before, Pentax, quite a bit warmer. You can see the, the lower contrast in this image specifically, whenever that finishes loading. But what's interesting here is these highlight areas. So where there's these like point sources or like, you know, bright highlights, you can see where the uh, Pentax doesn't handle them as well. So the Fuji's nice and controlled. It's kind of like this bloom. The Pentax is starting to go in a little bit of this like Sunstar. You'll see this in a few later images as well. Okay, next scene. So this is a, was a really cool spot. This is a Reliant Spares run by this uh, guy, Joe. The uh, Reliant Robins are these three wheeled cars here in England. They're actually super interesting. Uh, so he let me come out and shoot here for the day, which was uh, cool. I'm gonna go back. It's a pretty neat environment to, to photograph in. But this one, um, so this is the Fuji. And this is the Pentax. Go back to the Fuji, we'll put these side by side. And this is a good image to, uh, let me get this set out there. This is a good image to see the difference with those bright highlights again. So um, a lot of similarities. Pentax looks like it has just a little less contrast, a little warmer, but you'll see if we go in, we'll look at detail first. Because here the Pentax did a great job, in my opinion, keeping up with the Fuji. If we look at kind of these fine details, the writing on these uh, little bins. Again, not as good, but not far off. But if we go down here and start getting into this car and where the license plate is, it just, the, the Pentax falls apart quite a bit. But if we look up, so we'll look at these, uh, fluorescence, or these are like LED fluorescent lights. And you can see 
Um, the Fuji, again, it kind of just blooms the whole thing, whereas the Pentax, there's a lot more of it and it starts to kind of get a little streaky. Same even on these like highlights on top of this drill press or whatever this is, you can see they bloom a little more compared to the Fuji. So again, I kind of like that. You know, that could be considered like a little bit of character, I guess. But these are minor, minor things the, when it comes to look. Obviously the detail is a big one. And then one more example. So Fuji and the Pentax. I actually like how the Pentax looks here, that little bit of added warmth and a little less contrast. So back to the Fuji, back to the Pentax. And I won't bother zooming in and all that kind of stuff again, because I think you're all probably getting the point here, but you can see with uh, these fluorescent tubes and especially the shop light down here, how the uh, Fuji on the left handled it compared to the, the Pentax. So a little more like definitely a, a more flawed lens, the, the Pentax, which again, not, not shocking at all. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple like final edited examples because I want to prove a little bit of a point or, or get a point across here. But uh, before we do that, I'll show you uh, a few from the 75. I didn't do comparisons with this, obviously, because I didn't have a Fuji 75 mil focal length. But the cool thing with this 75 mil is, uh, so you'll notice similar like handling of these highlights compared to the 45 Pentax. So it's consistent across these Pentax lenses, probably due to the coating, I would think. But you'll see the 75 is like super sharp. It looks great. Um, and it doesn't, like it holds, it doesn't fall apart nearly as much or even at all compared to that 45. It looks great. So this is a lens that can certainly not only keep up with this sensor, but uh, potentially keep up with some other options for this sensor. Looks very nice. This is just an exterior shot, nothing special, but again, I think this was shot at 5.6. And you'll see, this is the 75 mil Pentax. It looks awesome. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to use this lens. Looks really nice. And then this is uh, the 75 uh, shot wide open at 2.8. I wanted to show this just because uh, when this loads, you'll see that this lens still performs very well, even wide open, tons of detail. A Little bit of blooming on those bright highlights, which is kind of nice. And then this is the 45. This, so this isn't the, the greatest portrait. Uh, I want to go back. This is Joe who runs Reliance Pairs. I want to go back and shoot some like proper portraits and take my time. But I want to show this because this was with the 45 28. And this is where like, again, it's going to come down to the type of work you do because that 45 has that like loss of sharpness in the edges. But if you're using it for something like this, you know, shooting wide open, doing these portraits, obviously that becomes uh, like not an issue at all. And then just for fun, again, another portrait, nothing special, but this is a 50 mil contacts 1.7. I don't really have anything to, to like a point to make here about this. I just want to show you this lens, this shot wide open. It vignettes a little bit, but, um, but kind of a cool look, you know, shooting with a full frame lens on the GFX. And this is that, uh, that scene from before shot wide open with that contact. So certainly shallow. Just messing around a bit, but uh, last point here I want to make. Okay, so we saw that um, the Pentax, uh, yes, it has like, you know, maybe a little bit more character, I guess you could say, because uh, it blooms a little bit, uh, it's a little bit warmer, but these things are so minor that like, yes, I still like that these Pentax lenses and how they look on this system and I'll use them, but these are two images. These are what I would consider like final edits. So I took these and I applied the exact same edits to them. Um, the Pentax is on the left, the Fuji is on the right. And you can see like at the end of the day, when you go and you make your final tweaks, these like, other than obviously the, the corner sharpness, these like differences in looks are so minor. And, and yes, they might add like a little something, but uh, so much more of what's important to an image is falls outside of uh, just these like uh, smaller lens characteristics. These look basically uh, identical. And then same with this one. So Pentax on the left, Fuji on the right. 
you know, all of a sudden that warmth, the highlight handling, like for me, the, the look that I'm going for and how I'm approaching editing my images, uh, once they're in their final state, uh, you know, both these images look, or both these lenses look basically identical. So I wanted to show kind of this side by side, just again, like I said at the start, you know, sometimes I think we get these opinions about lenses and, you know, vintage lenses being more filmic and this and that. And uh, part, sure, like part of it in a very minor way could be true, but I think often a lot of it can get into our heads a bit. And uh, you can see that with new optics and with older optics at the end of the day, if you're editing your images and giving them a certain look, um, that's obviously where most of the, uh, the, the look is gonna come from, which is not shocking, but I think it's important to, to kind of remember. Okay, so a couple closing thoughts. Um, for me moving forward, you know, I, I will definitely keep the Pentax class. I actually kind of prefer like the warmth and how it handles highlights in a few situations uh, and just, you know, cool to do this test and find out uh, exactly how these perform. And then moving forward, you know, I can use them as I feel best depending on the subject. So obviously I can use this 45 in a lot of situations, but if there is a scene where I, you know, need edge to edge corner sharpness, I could reach for the Fuji lens. But I do think these are a great option, you know, especially the 75, this performed really nice. Um, you know, if you're looking for some glass, some cheaper prime glass for your GFX system. Uh, and of course, like we saw with those comparisons, if you are shooting with uh, newer optics that we deem like too clinical, these certainly aren't gonna hold you back from getting the look you want with your images. There's so many other things that go into that that uh, are worth focusing on. Uh, which obviously is not surprising, but I think it's just important to kind of reiterate that. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this one. I uh, just want to say thanks again to MPB uh, for sponsoring this video. They've been a big reason why I've been able to make some of these GFX videos happen recently. So um, if you're looking to buy some used gear and save some dollars or uh, sell your gear in a really straightforward and easy way, check them out. I'll put a link uh, below. They're a great company to deal with. But uh, other than that, just want to say thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you next week, hopefully with an on-location vid to an undetermined location. Need to uh, figure that out and get out and film something here over the next couple days. But uh, anyways, thank you. Talk to you soon.